All right, so CPI is going to be coming out on Friday, and I already uploaded my expectation video on my channel. If you have not watched that yet, go ahead to my main channel and just check out that video. It's quite short. It's about five, six minutes or so. You know, I'm not going to hold back any information. Very, very simply, I'm going to give you guys all my expectation right there, uh, quick and simple, okay? So anyway, let's cover some news today. All right, so I don't think we have a lot to cover today, but first of all, we have to talk about Target. Yesterday, Target gave us a horrible profit warning, okay? Target warned that profit is going to drop due to high inventory levels. And of course, if you are in the United States, if you go to any of the Target stores, okay, I've seen a lot of videos about people going to the Target stores and seeing a huge influx of long due inventory items. You're going to see a lot of racks being filled to the brim of things that are actually stocked up over uh, due to the excess in the inventory, due to the lack of demand in those items. And of course, uh, on the other section, you'll see items that have too much demand, but not enough supply to actually keep up with it. So we're not really sure what is Target actually doing right now. Okay, so Target warning uh, for the profit to drop due to the high inventory level is definitely going to be troubling. And let's not forget that we also have, prior to this, about a month ago, we came out with Target uh, coming out with the, their earnings, saying that you know their inventory is going to be very very high, and Target actually dropped about um, I think twenty percent or something ridiculous of that sort. So yeah, definitely something that we need to really keep an eye out on. All right, so uh, one is profit will drop because it needs to cancel orders with vendors and offer discounts to clear unwanted goods. The latest sign of the sudden mismatch between supply and demand inside America's store. The big retailers benefited over past two years from the pandemic rush to buy patio furniture, laptops, home decor. As a shopper were buoyed by savings and government stimulus checks. Now many of those same stores are grappling with the swift reversal of buying behavior. With consumers spending less on goods in favor of services and necessities such as food and fuel. Of course, this is going to be reflected in my CPI expectation as well, as I actually talked a lot about the whole target situation as well. All right, anyway, next up, we got the World Bank warning of stagflation risk, cutting global growth forecast to 2.9%. So this is going to be a huge news, okay? It simply means that the World Bank is saying that, you know, stagflation risk is definitely up here. Cutting global growth forecast down to 2.9% is going to be an even bigger deal. It simply means that we are that much closer to a recession as a global globe, basically, as a whole world. And of course, this is going to uh, bring forth a lot of uh, fear in the market, of course. Uh, but I don't think that this kind of fear is uh, exactly um, not priced in, to say the least. I do think that the market has already uh, pretty much priced in on all these fears. Okay, even if you just check out my channel, if you type in hashtag recession, you probably can see a lot of videos from my side as well. As I talk about the possibility of recession over and over and over and over again. Okay, so I do think that um, this is not exactly something that's going to be new news for us. Okay, um, over here, you can see that the World Bank sharply lowered its growth forecast for the global economy for this year. Warning that of several years of high inflation and tepid growth uh, uh, reminiscent of the stagflation of the 1970s. Citing the damage from the war in Ukraine and the COVID-19 pandemic, the bank said global growth is expected to slump to 2.9% in 2022 from 5.7% in 2021, significantly lower than its uh, January forecast for 4.1% growth. Furthermore, growth is expected to hover around the reduced pace over 2023 and 2024 as the war disrupts human activities investment and trades while uh, government withdraw fiscal and monetary support okay so similarly uh for the next um summary of economic projection which is the SCP, uh which would be most likely coming out next month uh for the july uh, fomc we are most likely going to be getting the SCP. i'm not sure if we are getting it for the july one or the june one but one of it we're going to get the SCP, and in the SCP, we are most likely going to see new um, change in the uh, forecast for the Federal Reserve as well. Okay, so that's going to be very, very, very important for us to really gauge how far in are we for recession. But of course, we have to get past the first huge issue, which would most likely be the CPI. And afterwards, it's going to be FOMC. And then we have to look for PCE. So these are the three big events that we always see every single month or every two months or so uh, for the FOMC. And yeah, so that's kind of what we kind of look at for inflation and possibly recessionary risk uh, in the market. 
Uh, all right, so next up, we got better.com. Okay, for people who don't remember better.com, uh, I think this was about uh, four, five months ago, I think. Uh, I think it was early in the year. I think very, very early in the year, there was a company called better.com that basically sacked half of their employees via Zoom. It was in a Zoom call, and the CEO basically just fired half of the uh, of their employee. And yeah, you know, it, apparently they misled investor ahead of the stock spec deal, uh, the former executive alleges. <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, for people who are unaware, better.com is still uh, under a spec merger, which have not actually completed with the merger yet. I think they're still with the spec name at the moment. Uh, so, yeah, uh, nothing has happened really. It was supposed to be uh, planned to uh, be agreed on in May 2021, but as yet to close. Uh, yeah, clearly, uh, sadly to be done. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, for people who do not know what better.com actually do they are a mortgage uh, refinancing um company kind of like redfin um but just worse <laughs> i don't know man so yeah better.com was a major winner of the boom in housing prices and mortgage refinancing that company the pandemic and low interest rates the company grew revenue nearly tenfold to 876 million dollars in 2020 from year prior Posted a profit of $172 million and hired thousands as it rushed to keep up with a market company filing set. It raised $500 million from SoftBank okay, last spring and weeks later said it planned to go public at a valuation of $7 billion. Okay, yeah, this was the one where the CEO laid off 900 workers via a Zoom call. Oh, it was back in December. I thought it was in January. My bad. Uh, he took a brief Leave after the call sparked an uproar. The company has laid off thousands more as the market for spec deals has also cooled off. In the aftermath of the December layoffs, Mr. Gark said in a public letter that he took a responsibility for the decision to lay off the staff but blundered at the execution. He began, he, he began a leave the following day and Better.com said it hired an outside company to assess its culture and leadership. Mr. Garg returned to his position in January, according to an email sent to the employees. Uh, so yeah, the company lost $304 million last year, according to the company's filing. Last winter, Mr. Garg allegedly told the company's board and investors that the company would become profitable again by the end of the first quarter in 2022. Uh, Ms. Pierce said her operations team, in partnership with the company's finance department, had presented internal projection to Mr. Garg that showed the company couldn't expect to break even until at least the second half of this year. And I think that this is going to be happening for not just better.com, it's going to be happening for a lot of different companies. Okay, companies that actually went through spec mergers, companies that went through IPOs, companies that basically are not profitable at all until now. Those companies are definitely going to get blundered through uh, this, uh, this very, very tough market season at the moment. Okay. It's not just it's not just better.com. I can see it as it is. Okay. Better.com was just the, the one that got outlined for this particular um, article, but you can see that it is clear as a day that a lot of companies who are not making profit, they are all going to get squandered out. Okay, so uh, anyway, next news that we do have. Uh, this is one of the best. Okay, this is honestly one of the best news that I do want to talk about. Okay, China tech shares. Rally as the game approvals raise the hope of recovery. This is huge. Okay, a slew of China video game approvals is giving stock boosts renewed hope that a nascent rebound in tech shares could become a sustainable rally. Okay, the Hang Seng Tech Index jumped more than 4% on Wednesday after the government approved 60 licenses, bolstering bad that a year long crackdown that wiped out. $2 trillion in market value from the sector was nearing its end. The gauge pushed further from its recent downtrend and climbed above a key moving average for the first time in 15 months. This is huge. It's huge. Okay? The gaming approvals come on the heels of a report this week that China is wrapping up its investigation into Didi's Global, a major flashpoint in Beijing's move to curb the power and influence of a nation's largest company. To some investors, that suggests a marked turnaround in a sector that until recently have been considered uninvestable. Like I said before, I do think that um, for a period of time, Chinese companies, Chinese tech in particular, were actually uninvestable. They kept on dipping down and down and down. Every single day, we are finding new lows. 
Okay, I said it a lot of time. I wouldn't get into any of those Chinese tech. Okay, and clearly the trend has been going on for 15 months. Of course, very, very dangerous. And this actually started, um, I don't think it actually started uh, since the Evergreen situation. It just actually expanded hugely after the Evergreen situation. So Alibaba um, and Billy Billy uh, led the rally surging by as much as 11 and 19% respectively. The buying frenzy also lifted shares of Tencent holding and NetEase, despite the companies being absent from the approval list. I think the market is still excited about the potential restore of Didi on App Store and feels a bit risk-on sentiment. Okay, the newest batch of gaming license approval, though Tencent and NetEase are not on the list, is also good news. Okay, Beijing's wide-ranging tech crackdown spread to online gaming last summer when regulators introduced stringent measures to curb addiction. China's entertainment regulator on Tuesday approved licenses for 60 new games in what is seen as a step towards policy normalization. Okay, so this is huge. Okay, people are saying that this is starting to seem like um, a huge recovery back into Chinese tech, and I totally am living for it. Okay, I talked about it before. I got into NEO because I think that Chinese tech is going to be better. Okay, personally, I think that NEO will be a better play for me um, in the mid to longer term as compared to Alibaba. Uh, but of course, I do see I do see Alibaba as a great company right now. Okay, I even talked about it yesterday. I said that you know if you if you are already in Alibaba, just DCA in. I think that it is pretty dope for you to actually DCA into Alibaba. I don't think that it's going to be that bad to actually get into Alibaba if you already have existing uh, shares in Alibaba and you you are you know maybe if your average price is a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, some even at two fifty. Okay, it would be a good time for you to actually DCA into Alibaba. But of course, if you have not gotten into Alibaba at all and you're actually interested in the Chinese tech, do your own due diligence. Of course, it's not financial advice as always. But, you know, honestly speaking, keep a lookout for Chinese tech. I think it's very, very interesting. Okay, that's also one of the reasons why I actually got into NEO quite heavily as well. Okay, so from the sudden scuttling of N Group IPO in late 2020 uh, to sweeping reforms for online tutoring firms last summer um, to a shakeup of Macau casinos, Beijing's hallmark crackdown on the private sector has formed a rethink, a forced a rethink of uh, not just where, but whether uh, investors should put their money in the world's second largest economy. The reforms have landed most heavily on tech companies with nearly $2 trillion of market value wiped out since a 2021 peak, while the Hang Seng tech gauge has risen almost 40% from its mid-March low. It remains more than 50% below its 2021 highs. So that's why, okay, a lot of time during the bull market, we always say, when in doubt, zoom out, okay? You know, a lot of people like to say that during the GME rush, people like to talk, call it during the AMC rush, okay? But let's not forget, it also kind of works out. When in doubt, zoom out for bear market as well, okay? Just because you're up 50% or 80% or even 100%, when you actually zoom out, okay, you're still down by maybe, what, 50%, 60% in some cases, so yeah, do not be too happy about just 100%. But of course, we're not here to be pessimistic about the stocks market uh, because after all, we're here to try to make some money. All right, so uh, anyway, next up in the news, we have uh, BYD may sell batteries to Tesla executive tells state media. I think this is going to be huge. Okay, for people who do not know who BYD is, it's one of the biggest company, the biggest EV company in China. And also, I think BYD stands for Build Your Dreams, but, you know, whatever it is. Uh, automaker backed by Warren Buffett is readily ready to sell its own batteries to Tesla, an executive in the Chinese company, has told state media. We are good friends with Elon Musk, and we are preparing to supply batteries to Tesla. Uh, okay, cool. I'm not sure if Tesla actually wants it, but okay. Uh, well, there's long been speculation about the likelihood of BYD striking a battery supply deal with the world's biggest maker of electric cars. Neither party has ever confirmed talks. Okay, Tesla makes its own batteries, counts uh, tem contemporary and prex uh, technology, LG Energy Solution, and Panasonic, among its other suppliers. BYD, Hong Kong listed shares, up almost 13% this year, jumped as much as 4.1%. Uh, CATL, the world's largest battery maker, slumped as much as 7.2%. 7.2 percent sell orders from tesla would be a coup for byd one of china's biggest automakers 
the companies may still were stronger than expected, uh, particularly against the backdrop of China's COVID-related disruption with the whole uh, zero COVID policy that's happening in China. Okay. Um, and also uh, with analysts putting the results down to BYD's higher level of vertical integration and better supply chain management. Uh, which you know, I'm not sure if that's going to be the case, but I do, uh, I do like to believe that uh, China would have a better supply chain management simply because most of the supply chain is actually in China, so you kind of, kind of don't really have a choice for that. Okay, BYD, which is aiming to become more directly involved in mining of lithium, the raw material that's crucial for EV batteries, pledged early earlier this year to stop producing cars entirely powered by fossil fuel. CATL count Tesla as its largest customer, generating around 13 billion yuan, uh, amounting to 1.9 billion US dollars, or 15% of its power battery uh, units of revenue. In recent months at Ningta, the Fujian based company has struggled with soaring raw material prices and has its dominance in the market to help pass on those arising costs to the customer, including Tesla, NEO, and XPeng. Of course, the last line is going to be very, very crucial for us to really look into, okay? Because it simply means that Tesla, NEO, and XPeng are definitely going to be seeing a lesser margin, okay? For their, for their future costs, their future uh, profits in their future earnings are definitely going to see a lesser margin due to a rising raw material cost. And of course, with rising raw material costs, we all know what actually caused it, which is the whole Ukraine-Russia situation. Yada, yada, yada. I think we all know about that. All right, anyway, let's move on to the next one, which is this is why your airline fees, your airline tickets are so expensive right now, okay? Travelers pay top dollar as flight routes uh, frequency curb, higher jet fuel costs, excavating airline industry woes. Okay, I think I covered this in my CPI expectation, which is also uh, one of the huge things that I think is going to be um, contributing to the high inflation that we're going to be getting in this month. Okay, airline fares. I do think the airline fares is going to be going up. Okay, and I said it uh, in that video, and I'm going to say it again over here for you guys. Okay, two different factors uh, for me to actually take into account. One of it is the recovery economy. People are all starting to go back on business trips. People are starting to go on leisures, uh, on on the uh, leisure trip. People are going out on holiday, on vacation, whatever it is, honeymoon. Okay, go right ahead. Airline fees are going to be going up because demand is going up. Okay, and secondly, it's going to be fuel prices. With fuel prices constantly going up, especially with the EU embargo, okay, putting even more uh, pricing pressure onto oil prices, which then inevitably will be putting more pressure onto the airline fares because they are kind of counting on fuel to be low in prices for them to actually continu continuously flying all those air airplanes, okay? So, of course, these are going to be affecting airline tickets, okay? I think that they, they are basically going to be talking about the same thing that I already talked about, okay? So, I don't really care about that. All right, next up, we've got market optimists that make the case that 2022 will end on the high note, okay? Honestly, I don't really want to go through with this because this is an opinion piece, uh, and I want to just tell you guys, I don't think so. I don't think 2022 is going to be ending on a high note, okay? If anything, we're going to be ending on a high inflation note. I don't think we're going to be ending on a high note. I don't see anything that's getting us out of the market just yet. 2022 is still going to be horrible for a lot of people, okay? So don't be too op optimistic just yet. Invest safe, okay? And also... Again, 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 get on margin, okay? I, I, I've said this multiple times. I've said this a thousand times, okay? Get on margin, okay? This is not the market for you to get in margin. This is not a bull market. This is not a market that we've seen back in 2020 and 2021 where you basically put in $1,000 and you can take back almost $2,000 every single day, okay? This is not that kind of market. So don't play with margin if you do not know what you're doing. Okay, but anyway, that's all I have for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, and yeah, you know, check out the CPI video again. Okay, I think that those uh, that if you need a five minute, six minute um, preview of what's going to be happening for the CPI, I think that's going to be very, very valuable to you. But anyway, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.